I'm Dre Rivers. The music business can be a very unforgiving and insensitive industry. With money being its strongest factor, one can fall victim to greed, or dishonesty, or malicious intent, or all of the above. On the other hand, to the ill knowledge and overly trusting, this industry can cause one to break up business relationships, musical groups, friendships, and even family. Take a look, take a listen, as we interview our next guest on this special episode of The Gab Show. It's The Gab Show with comedian Jay Sugar, c- c- comedian Jay Rich, and Dre Rivers Entertainment. The Gab Show starts now. Yes, 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 yes. Welcome to another episode of The Gab Show. I'm your host, Jay Rich, and we got Shay Sugar in the building. Say hi to the people, girl. And shout out to Dre Entertainment for making this whole thing happen. Right now, we got a wonderful guest in the building with us tonight. We got my boy Elijah Baker, a former member of the Tony, Tony, Tony group, uh, originated here in Oakland, California. We're going to be talking about music. We're going to be talking about entertainment. We're going to be talking about contracts, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So we're going to get it all out there, everybody. And Elijah, thank you so much for coming on out here, Thanks my for brother. Having me, brother. Straight up, straight up. East, West, Oakland. Thank you. Oh, Richmond. <laughs> in Richmond's in the building. Whatever. <laughs> the Bay is in the building for sure. Elijah, what inspired you to do your documentary? I watched it. I went to watch it again, but it, you took it down. Uh, so what inspired you to uh, do, the, do the documentary and why did you take it down? Well, what inspired me to do the documentary was I was just trying to gain credibility for my input and the rest of the members, Antron, Jubal, Carl, Amar. Pretty much we had mm-hmm. accomplished and contributed to this, the look and the sound. Um, we're doing our own music right now. So we wanted to gain credibility back so we can get people to view our music based on our history. So mm-hmm. therefore... We didn't have to feel like we were starting over. So, so the documentary is based on the the, the beginning and the the group of Tony, Tony, Tony. The genesis to the revelation, and we took it down because uh, we had like seventeen thousand views, which in a couple of days, and that's like a a no no for a film distribution company to pick you up. They want all the money, so they said it was too good for YouTube and. Now I'm shopping offers right now, shopping deals right now. It, what's the name of it? Loyalty, no royalty. Oh, wow, wow. So it's really just digging in deep about the business part of, uh, of the group and in the entertainment world, right? Yeah, it's basically how money can kill relationships. Mm, okay. it, I, I think it's, it's, it's a way money can... You can let money kill a relationship. Money will not kill a relationship. It's, yes, exactly. You can allow that to happen. The character of a person can allow that to happen. Yes. Now, do you feel like you dig real deep in the, like, you, did you let it all out on the documentary? No, I didn't let it all out, but I let all the facts out. All the facts, basically, on it. Yes. And the, the thing is, what's crazy is they just did a interview with uh, one of the members the other day. And I was shocked because I was watching the interview, and um, and like you said, you took the documentary down. But one of the inter- one of the uh, members, uh, Raphael, okay, he stated in the interview that he actually seen the documentary. Did you send that to him personally, or did somebody else get it to him? Or I sent it to you- all. I sent it to all three members. Oh, okay, okay. So they I, all I, got I, I didn't want them to hear it from nobody else. I want them to hear it from me because my angle was more so. Let me just show y'all the damage y'all did to us without maybe knowing that you had that effect on us. So it was more of a, I feel like, okay, damn, I realized, I didn't didn't realize I did that to y'all, so we can fix it and build, but they took it personal. Do you feel like they took it personal because they knew nothing about it and they just up and look at this documentary that's so-called like telling on them and they didn't have time to like, I watched it and Raphael said that it was no cross references. Where there was a cross reference, the original manager, he the one did all the deals. And um you Which said was Tony, Tony, Tony. He got us our he did all the paperwork. And who is he? The original manager for Tony Tony Tony. Does he have a name? 
Carlos Stanfield. Okay. Carlos Stanfield. Okay. Yeah, and that Carlos was in the right. Carlos was in the documentary. Yeah, I that, haven't was, seen it. that was my mm-hmm. main purpose of uh, getting him because we didn't know all the business, but he did. He, matter of fact, none of us was in the meeting. Ray Tim and Dwayne was in the meeting. Me, Carter Nash, were in the meeting. Just him doing all the paperwork. He brought the paperwork for us to sign. But when they discuss money in business, it would just be the three, and then me, Tim. I mean, me, uh, Antron, and Carl were signing contracts after the meeting. So we went around for the money talk and all the important meetings. So yeah. why did you ask? I'm, excuse, I'm no, sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Why did you ask Carlos to show up that day? Like, was this planned? Did you know? Very much so. I wanted to know some answers okay. you know, that, that I didn't know. And um, he revealed a large sum of money was dispersed, which he said was $6 million. And that's what awoke all of this controversy because that was not angle at first. We just wanted to say, hey, this is what we did with Tony, Tony, Tony. Now we're doing this. Please support us. Listen to what we're doing. Since if you like this, you may like this. But when Carlos mentioned that money, a whole different emotion come. Now we feel betrayed. So I went and did my investigation and contacted uh, the record label, Universal Music Group, and got a hold to the contracts. But I had to email my signature over first before they released it to make sure it was authentic. So once I sent it over, they gave it to me the next day, emailed it back to me. Mm. Now, do you believe everybody, because you, you play bass. Yes. You was a bass player for the for Tony, Tony, Tony. And a choreographer. Now, with let's get, let's get something clear first real quick. Is Tony, Tony, Tony a group that includes singers and band members or is it a three singer type thing and the band is separate okay let me dissect that good question before the record deal it was Raphael, tim and Dwayne for a few shows okay okay um then um they got they did some demos without nobody maybe carl was with them so they had an additional member because carl played all the keys so it was them three and carl that i know for a fact um so they did a few shows and Raphael mentioned in an interview that thomas McElroy noticed them but said if he noticed them playing he would notice us too because once they started doing shows they added me tron and carl so always even before Thomas introduced them to Wing Polygram. We was all performing locally, all six of us, before the record deal. As Tony, Tony, Tony. As Tony, 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 Tony. Yep. Okay. And who? And and when I was watching the interview with uh, with um, Raphael, mm-hmm. and they was talking about he he did a, a, a long. Well, basically, he said it. he said, "Well, I did a long winded um, answer." To whether you guys were together and money and different things like that, but he said if you would if you would have talked to Thomas, is it McElroy? Yes. Then it would have been a five minute answer. You know why it would have been a five minute answer? Why? Well, That's how long he was signed to Thomas McElroy for five minutes. Um, they only um, signed to them on the Who record, which is the first CD. And far as music business concerned, an artist signing directly to a production company, a production team. It's not favorable for an artist. Okay. Now I heard during another, I mean, during the interview, he said the the way that you ended up playing bass is that he couldn't sing and play bass um, at the same time. So he moved over to the singing role and pulled you in. That's how that started. Yes. Uh, Dwayne was the original lead singer at first. So Raphael did play bass, and when we was doing in the, um, local um, gigs. I was just dance. They had me like the drone, like of time. Mm-hmm. That was my role at first when Raphael was playing the bass majority of the time. <laughs> so I played the bass part time, but I would dance and be a part of the show like drone. Mm-hmm. Then once Thomas got Ray Tim and Dwayne in the studio, he merged Ray into the lead singer position, which probably caused some confusion with Dwayne and Raphael because Dwayne was always the lead singer. Mm-hmm. He may not know it, but we noticed it became a little tense. Little. When the switch came. Yeah, little tense. But it seemed to me that if you guys were a group, then then the maneuvering 
within the group would be fair if like years were to go like you may have ended up being lead at some point on some albums right. or something like that so the way, the way that was moving it seems like everybody was playing a part in different spaces within the group because you you feel like you were all equal in the group right well we weren't even tripping on that like we felt that because they did start before that those were the principles mm -hmm. but we still it took that whole six unit to perform live Right. You couldn't just take them three and perform because when they did that on a promotional tour, just lip syncing, Tim played drums. So it right. just leave Ray and and uh, Dwayne in the front. Together, there's no chemistry. So the record company had them call me, which I wasn't at this time signed to the label at this time, but they knew I was part of the front line. Okay. So they called me to go on the road and perform with them and well okay so all right so that's why i'm confused that so they were already signed right but to call you to 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 come in on the road with them that almost seems like a hired band like you were a hired like you were a hired um player well if you put it in a in a um at that point contractually wise you can say that because i wasn't on no contract okay but for tony tony to perform at that time they needed the way the sequence of the show was, mm -hmm. it had to be all the members for them to do a show. You couldn't send them three out and perform the Who record because the instruments on that project consist of a band. Right, right. So at that time, legally, I was. Okay. Legally, you were? A hired musician. Like, okay. like I, wasn't, I wasn't signed to the production company. But no one at that time was signed to the label. Okay. So the three was not signed to the label as well. They were signed to Thomas and Denny. They only got the record company because of Tommy and Denny. Okay. When they shop deals alone with their demos, nobody would pick them up. They picked them up because of what Thomas and Denny did with Club Nouveau. Raphael and, mentioned that. Yes. What they did with uh. Club Nouveau and Thomas. So that opened the door for them. Raphael also mentioned that the record company didn't want to sign us three. Okay, let me show you something. I don't want to be one to say, I want you to see it with your own eyes, so okay. y'all yeah, don't think I'm making this stuff up. While you look that up, too, I want to, I had a question Go ahead. Uh, while you're looking up whatever you're looking up. Uh, Raphael mentioned that uh, all of this was 30 years ago. And he, the way he put it was like, you're still crying over something that happened 30 years ago. And basically i want to know why is that six right? million dollars that's why i want <laughs> I mean, okay. I mean, if it was 20 years ago i want my six i mean uh honey that's years that's ago, that's I want that's, my that's, money. that's for anybody but first of all i wasn't crying for 30 years i found out 30 years later okay. right right so if you find out that you owe it's some me. money 30 years later that equates to potential millions of dollars who not gonna inquire about that or cry about that, or try to find out about that. Right. You can use what the fuck words you want to. I'm going to check and see if I have some money available. Okay. But why you didn't check when they first signed the contracts? Because just like you said, you know, you wasn't worried about who all was equal and different things like that. Why were they going in the room making money decisions? And you all are all just, if you're all one group, if me, you, and Shay a group, why only me and Shay going to talk to the people? We asked them questions back in them days. That's you, right. And what was your, what, what, what answers did you get? They was like, oh, man, don't worry about it. Y'all taking care of it. We talked to the manager. We weren't talking to the individuals because he brought us the contract. Carlos Stanfield brought us the contract. So by us at that time being trusting and feel that it, we family. So we didn't have no questions and even doubt about it. And also, mm -hmm. let me include this to y'all. Also, this one valuable information is missing. We also had a corporation together called Tony Tony Inc. Tony Tony Incorporated. There was a, a detachment to the recording contract and the publishing contract. So the three, which made them the primary, had 60% to split 2020-20. Carl Antron and myself had to split 40%. 16, 12, and 12. They gave Carl 16% because he was more a seniority for us, the production wise. Mm. So, and you have these documents. And as you well. are okay with that, yes. right? Yes. Well, I don't, I don't have that one, but I remember that one verbatim because that's the one they gave me when they um, kicked me out the group. Well, what did you just pull up on your phone? Wait a minute, but wait, before you do, why'd you get kicked out? 
First and of all, who officially initiated the kick out? Was it well, Dwayne? Did somebody get? Well, all, all three of them had something to do with it, but they kicked me out because I was inquiring how the fuck y'all about houses and cars, and we can't. So you kind of had a smidget. You kind of had more of an instinct that something wasn't right 30 years ago, and then 30 years later, you just got the confirmation is what you're doing. Yes, 30 years later, I officially own and see the contract. I never had that contract in my possession. Right. Those contracts, I had a publishing contract and a recording artist contract. See, the way they treated us, the document they gave me when they fired me was the corporation paper. That holds no weight in court because your percentages and your um, locked-in documents ain't there to show your uh, proof of percentage of in that group. Mm -hmm. Corporation is a corporation. Um, it don't show where the money coming from. Right. So no attorneys would take me back then because as soon as they kicked me out of the group, I went somewhere and tried to get legal representation, but I didn't have my recording contract and publishing contract. So I thought, I guess I ain't got no right until we filmed this documentary and Carlos said about that money. So we knew from the Tony Tony Inc. Corporation paperwork that we was entitled to at least 12%. So we knew that we had something coming. Now so what is that? This is the actual recording contracts. And I don't want to read it because they may think I'm lying. I want you to read it, Shay. Well, your glasses are shaking. My Shay. glasses, you're right. <laughs> Take your time. Shut up, Shut up no, Girth and make her. Um, to who <laughs> it may concern. Remember, your parents ever do that? To whom it may concern. So I started number 13, Hush. No, I, where, where I had it at. Because the way Raphael said it the other day, you wasn't part of the group. Exactly. Here. So that's that's, that's why I want to that's what I want to validate right now. Y'all heard that that he said I wasn't part of the group. He know he said the record company only wanted the three of them. That's what he yeah. said. Yeah. Didn't want. He said he fought for y'all. Right. But he also got said, you in the pictures, got you on the album cover because y'all was rocking with him from the gate, and he felt like it would be bad if he did y'all like that. So if if it wasn't also, for him, y'all wouldn't even be involved. True that. He got that. But he also said that the record company didn't want to sign the three of us, correct? I mean, the six right. of us. Right. He, they only wanted the three of them. That's what he said. That's, right. that's what he said. Right. That's what he said. Read I've that. Seen it. Read that. What did it say, Shike? What did Shike? <laughs> Every time I try to open it. You can't, can't open it too wide. You got to squint. Okay. Let's squint your eyes a little bit. You can do it. Uh, I know you from Richmond. Went to Richmond School. Now nah, I'm playing. Nah, I'm playing, but. <laughs> P.R.I. Hereby engages grantor to furnish the exclusive services, half of that word is cut off, of Dwayne Wiggins, Raphael Sadiq, I mean Raphael Wiggins, Timothy Riley, Antron Hale, Elijah Baker, and Carl Wheeler. So all of y'all performing together, the musical group Tony, 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 individually and collectively, I'm guessing that because that's kind of cut off. Uh, the artists and the services of individual producers to produce and deliver to PRI master recordings as provided for herein. So therefore, that's proof right there saying that you, the people named in that contract are the group, Tony, Tony, Tony. But uh, the record company want to sign all six of us. So I want you to see one more thing, Shay. One more thing. All the signatures. How many signatures you see? Do you see three or six signatures? I see six. Dwayne Wiggins, Raphael Wiggins. Y'all can't write worth a damn either. <laughs> this is go back back then. Do you think it's some do you do you Timothy think it's Riley, an honest mistake of that Trump statement Hill, the other Elijah day by it being thirty years ago? You don't know Could you give him a benefit of the doubt on that? Like I'm, I'm I'm be honest with you. The way they talking, I will give him the benefit of the doubt because they talk with so much confidence. And it's not the truth. It's, right. He used the word facts a lot, and he don't have no facts. The contract is the facts. Now, put some paperwork out, just like I pulled some paperwork out, and diffuse what I'm saying. I don't. I'm not talking about nothing. I'm making up. He going by what he feel, but tell him do what I did. Go to Universal Musical Group, Music Group, get the original 1989 signing of Tony 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 contract with all six members. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Why would you make a documentary, pull up all these facts, and produce the documentary, put it out, 
Raphael, Dwayne, nobody knows anything until it's finished and then you emailed it to them. Why didn't you give them a chance? I know you have probably, of course, been talking to them, but why wouldn't you mention this to them? Raphael is your first cousin. Why wouldn't you call him and say, man, I'm upset. Carlos said this. I have documents. I'm about to do this documentary. Why wouldn't you give him a chance? Why? Well, well, why? They, they knew it was feminine before it was done. Why wouldn't you personally? Me and him wasn't question. talking at the time. Why? Because um, he said something to a mutual friend of ours and was factual. And What did he, he say? He, I don't want to go into that because that's personal. You know what I'm saying? But he said something to um, make me just fall back. And he just stopped calling me because we used to talk every day prior. So by him stop calling me and me getting that information, and my last conversation with him was on FaceTime, and he had some type of guilt expression on his face. So I even asked him, like, man, what's, what's going on? What's wrong with you? And he, he didn't say that. He couldn't, like, he couldn't even look at me through FaceTime. So ever since then, we fell back. But to his defense, he said I said something to have him to react to how what I heard. So, that, so you mean to tell me y'all first cousins yes. and y'all tripping out on some reactions of something he that said, somebody she said? said. Right. Yes. So and 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 because of that, you just put this whole documentary no, out. No, that wasn't the reason I put the documentary out. I put the documentary out because they I had know that. They, no listen, you ain't let me finish. They didn't let me they've been talking about getting a group together since I got out of jail in two thousand twelve. It's two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. So once I turned fifty years old, I'm like something got to happen. Not to get the group together because I was convinced they weren't gonna do that. I did it once again to gain my credibility to start my own thing so I can attach my history to what I'm doing currently. Now, they're talking about getting the group back together, right? Right. What broke the group up in, in, in the beginning? Were you, were, you, were you the first person to leave the group? Like, how, how did you, when the group was doing fine. Then, then like you said, how y'all buying houses and cars and I ain't got no money? Is that the start of the of the breaking up of the group? That's definitely the start. And it started with you and the other band members. Antron Hill. Okay. Why did Raphael leave when he left? Because Tim and Dwayne start stealing or using or taking from the profits without his knowledge. And so, when he when he when he pulled up the paperwork, he saw that hey. All this money missing and is Dwayne and Tim's signature. Like I said, Ray, when he do business, he take that money and allocate it towards the production. He he do what he's supposed to do with the money. Dwayne and Tim was just spending it on random things. So on money being stolen or not giving it to its due, who's the ringleader? You would think. I ain't because because it, 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 it seemed to me that uh, um, Raphael left because of the same problem that you got. Right, but. So if both y'all got the same problem, you think he would do that to you when it's when when it's being done to him as well? Well, I feel he. I only think I hold Raphael responsible for is him not speaking up by him seeing things done wrong to us. I can't blame him that he did it. Okay. I can't blame Dwayne or Tim because I don't know exactly who did it until I be able to see them financials, right? And I see where the money went to then. I would know, so I'm not gonna blame. So at this point, all three of them is guilty. On the outside looking in, it looked like some money corruption is jumping off in this group. My uh, uh, Elijah got hit, he left. Uh, Antron uh, uh, Hill. Rafi oh, Antron got hit, he yeah. left. Raphael got hit, now we're nope. left. Just the order. Elijah Antron left, we got hit. Carl left because they did this to me and Antron. And, we was and he cousin. wasn't feeling it. He wasn't feeling it. He left. But at the same time, he didn't receive his royalties either. in advances either. He received publishing, so they did give him that. But he didn't receive his artist royalties and his recording advances and his publishing advances. And their names is also on that contract you just showed us. Yes, sir. Now, let me say this. I, I watched Raphael, and he mentioned that in so many words, I think I tried to, I kind of picked up the fact that he's bringing the group back together for his dad. And it's not going to be a long-term thing. It's just going to be a temporary thing where they get together and make an album. And right. that's for his dad. But he said in his words that he, basically, I felt like he said something like, you know, he wasn't happy 
you know, kind of comparing himself to what you did. He's, he was saying he wasn't, I mean, how you felt. He wasn't happy about some things that went on. So he left the group. And when he left the group, he moved on and started doing other things and ended up doing bigger and better things. And my point is, now that you know all of this that's going on, what are you doing now? Meaning, um, I was just starting the three TLB group. The original band got together mm -hmm. and we're going to make our own music and create our own legacy without the three because they wouldn't let us be involved as much as we could be. So in, in, in the process, they stunted our growth, you know, but not allowing like Do you Raphael, think they did or y'all stunted your own growth? Uh, they did because we try to contribute things and like I played on some bass lines that was taken off. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like I didn't attempt to try to contribute. I played on some things that sounded good and that was taken off. But right when Raphael left the group, he continued to bust moves. Like what was, what was your movement like when you first left? Is it just more so of a sour note? Like I'm leaving the group, they didn't give me no money and well, I, we all had we all had depression we, or something like that. Cause nah. some people do that and don't want to work, don't want to do nothing. Was your well, how it affected, creativity? Well, how it affected, affected me, how it affected me, I just grinded. Like I had a lot of production deals. I got I pour, I produced about like four, five, six acts immediately out of Tony, Tony, Tony. Okay. They was paying like 15000 a song. Nice. So I, I was able to establish a production career, but with music industry money, it goes up and down. So by the time they finished recording the third album, me and Ad Tryon got back in the group. But now we in the group as hired musicians, the way they initially wanted it. Because we still young mm -hmm. and that's all we knew. So we just got back in there and did that. But nobody for... Antron is probably the only one it affected deeply. Like me, I just did what I had to do and, and, and kept it pushing. You know, um, Juba and Carl, they've been playing for Frankie Beverly over 20 years, and Frankie Beverly bigger than the Tonys. Like, his touring is, he got a coat. You know what I mean? Right, right. Non-stop touring, so ain't nobody hurting for nothing. Like, they had the Stone Soul. Yes. If they ain't at the Stone Soul, I'm like, wait, what happened with them? <laughs> right, like, they ain't, ain't nobody, like, sitting there twiddling their thumbs, yeah. oh, 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 woe is me. Right. But I, I honestly, I really feel like all of y'all was affected, and some will, will, will admit it, and maybe you don't even realize it. When I watch... Raphael Sadiq, who is your first cousin. Yes. Your dad is his favorite uncle. He just mentioned that. Mm -hmm. Your dad is his favorite uncle. I, you mentioned that his mother is like your mother. Like you love her. Yeah. It, like I said, dearly. It's, it's, it's nothing personal. Like he said, we ain't got no personal issue with our family. Right. Me and him have a business issue that needs to be resolved. It does. And, and then that will heal everything else. When he, like I, if he do his research, like I did my research, he may come to the point like, I didn't realize this. Okay, well, listen, this doesn't make any sense to me. Okay. Because you say all of that, y'all family, y'all favorites of mamas and daddies right. and all that. You never reached out to him and you just sent him the documentary. He haven't talked. It was some he say, see, she No, he say. reached out to him. They, they talked until I'm talking the whole about, little Excuse right? me, Jay Rich. I'm talking about. After, before he put the the documentary out, he didn't say a word. He just sent it out, sent it to them. They knew nothing about it, basically. So you didn't give him a chance to, you didn't, you won't have a conversation with him. So now you're saying, until we do this, until we do that, y'all ain't even talking, which don't make no sense. And then when I heard, your he, he has a new uh, CD out, and I love his CD, I do. And I love your daddy on there. Amazing. But he has one song called This World is Drunk. This world is drunk and the people are mad. <laughs> but he mentioned, and I know he's talking about you because he said he he, he mentioned that uh, you were in prison. You did time. Yes, I did. For fraud. Yes, I did. And when I heard that song, I felt like, oh, he must really be hurt. But, I mean, I would be too. So you saying his way was appropriate of communication? No, I'm saying y'all going and my back. My documentary isn't. That, I'm saying that's probably why he did it. I feel like that was a good did warning it. shot. You that's sent why. it to them first, right? Yes, and warning that was shot. his last. Hold on, before I released it, so you had time I to let you address know. it. Yes. My point is, that's probably why he made that song because he was upset, and he mentioned on uh, on his interview with Sway that uh everybody was mad and that's why I guess you made the documentary so now y'all ain't speaking or whatever. We weren't speaking before the documentary. 
Listen, me and Ray got a history of not talking a few years. It's just not That's nothing. That's crazy. But it's just not nothing new. This, this is him, though. He he distanced himself. I don't distance myself from him. He distanced himself. He always been like that. So this this is not irregular. This is not abnormal. This is our relationship. How's your relationship with uh, Dwayne? I don't have a relationship with Dwayne. I, you, I never really had a even though even though that's 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 Raphael's cu uh, brother, right? I never had a relationship with Dwayne or Tim as far as business. Like like Raphael said, I'm his cousin. I know Dwayne through him, and Dwayne is much older than we are. Right? We don't have is he? yes. We don't have too many things in common. So we do business, and when we amongst each other, we will laugh and have a good time. But Dwayne have his own entourage. I have my own entourage. Me and Ray, we intertwine with, we got the same people. Tim have his own people, and so on and so on. So me and Dwayne ain't never had that buddy-buddy relationship outside of Tony, Tony, Tony. I feel like Ralph is, is kind of, I wouldn't say he's getting pulled. Did you just say you? Ralph? <laughs> everybody, call, everybody call him that. That ain't nothing new. I feel, I feel like Ralph. he. Niggas not, abbreviate every name. <laughs> I thought it I was feel, Ray. I feel like uh, uh, I, I'm not saying he's getting pulled back and forth because he. I, I noticed one thing he said. He said he would love for you to play with him when they come back. Well, but he said, for one, it's almost like how could I play with him after the documentary and the shit you talking? And then two, one thing that underlines for me, he like, well, you know, Dwayne, Dwayne for sure ain't fucking with him. Like he put that underline, well, and he, he still got love because y'all cousins, y'all been fucking with. You like, well, Dwayne for sure ain't fucking with. Him. <laughs> he could put that. On, but, on, on, he, he so could, how could he bring you in and you and like you said, you and Dwayne never had no relationship like that. So they more so like, oh, this nigga talking shit. Fuck. Okay, okay, let me talk. You ready? Yep. I don't give a fuck. I ain't, <laughs> I'm not trying to play with them like that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, I'm over all that. I want to deal with the situation right. at hand. I'm over the Tony, Tony, Tony shit. I, I'm, if it was I, offered, I was, would you throw it listen, away? Listen, I was always the one fighting for it. But since I seen it, it never happened. I'm on to what I got to accomplish now. If they called you and said, look, we want you to rock with us. We doing about no, 70 I can't, I can't, I, Could I you can't, throw the past I away? I can't rock without rocking with everybody else. If all of us ain't going, I ain't going by myself. So that's it and that's that. Yeah. I'm not rocking by myself. I wasn't there by myself. This world is drunk and the people <laughs> are mad. Hey, by the this way, who, who's drunk. Willie That's Hannon? a good song. Who's Willie Hannon and um, is it Tyrone Duckett? Those are our childhood friends. And Willie Hannon and Ray graduated together. Tyrone was in the middle. He graduated a year between me and Ray. All of us went to Castamont, so all of us is close friends. And uh, y'all DP Stoking boys. Yes. And uh, okay, okay. Ray and Willie Hannon stay constantly in contact, so that's very normal. Um, Tyrone Duckett, I put in the documentary, so Ray haven't spoken to him in seven years or something like that. It's been a long time, been years. And by Ray, see what they ain't understanding. They seen some good times. The documentary ain't all. It ain't a bash video anyway. It's just our truth. Right. And nobody can't tell you your own story but your story. I'm just telling our experience with Tony Tony. Our experience. But anyway, in the midst, we show clips of our childhood friends who was around mm -hmm. at the time, which was Tyrone Duckett um, and Willie Hannon. But if you... When they said... When Ray mentioned cross-reference, you know why I didn't go and get more cross-references? Because it would have turned into a bash video. Because if mm. they would have told their truth, they would have told you they didn't get what was rightfully theirs also. Right. So that's why I didn't go go interview all our friends and people who work with us because their story is just like ours. Right. And then everybody would be like, we bashing. So be very careful because I can go do a, a cross-reference video right. with everybody who was around at that time. And... Him having Willie Hannon as a friend, and I'm not 100% sure about this. This is something they may have to discuss, and I shouldn't probably even be bringing it up because I don't know for sure. But I almost for sure, um, and they can talk about it because we're all friends. Mm -hmm. So Willie Hannon wrote some of them songs, too, in Trinidad with, with on the third Sons of Soul album that he didn't get no credit of. And him and Ray are best friends. Mm. I found this out third party, but from a very reliable source. I don't but know. You're if, not, you don't know for a but, fact. But it's, but it's open now, so okay. now they can talk about it. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, right. So I, I probably can call Willie Hannon later on and, and ask him and confirm it. And be, I'm, but I'm that confident to mention it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if I go cross reference everybody, trust me when I tell you this. Trust me when I tell you this. If I cross reference everybody who did business with Tony, 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 all of them will feel slated. All of them will say they, they did something and didn't get credit for it. That's why I didn't do it. I feel and and to, and to tell you the truth, the energy I get from you on the whole, it don't seem like you being malicious. It's more so like just let me get let me get what's mine. I'm not really mad at you. Just let's be I'm, fair. This is business, man. Let's be fair. Dwayne, listen. Also, it's this publishing artist publishing company called Sound Exchange. Okay. okay. You get credit for being an artist, so the three of them made that claim and they've been receiving checks from years from them. Once I found out about it, I threw my poll in and made my claim. Mm -hmm. And guess what happened? What? They froze the account because in their policies, I'm a member. So what happened then after they froze? It's right in negotiations right now. It's, it's, it's a resolution part. Oh, like, this was recently. This is very recent. Um, and Dwayne tried to deny me out of that. He wrote, oh, he's just a um, session musician. Uh, if if you want to pay off anything, live performances or choreography, then that's what we owe him for. Asshole. That's what they're saying. You, this is performance. They, right. This ain't about songwriting and publishing. This is about being a part of the group. Right. So he tried to diss me, but at the same time acknowledge that I was a part of it. Right. But they already made their judgment before that. So right now, we're in the negotiations of that. So I will be able to see the records. So they're not going to give a hired musician the financials. Mm -hmm. Right, that. right, right. So if the record company wanted just them three, why all six of our signatures on a contract? Which means you got access to all records because you are on the contract. That's right. But I'm saying not give it to if the musicians. record company didn't want he. Adamantly said, because I've seen him say it. If they didn't want all three of us, why did they sign all six of us? I mean, if they only want just the three of them, why did they sign all six of us? That don't make no sense to me. If they didn't want all six of us. What I will say is all six of y'all were amazing. And chemistry, the energy. A team. Yeah, you totally had the chemistry. And I've seen the other uh Tonys, but Raphael Sadiq and you, Antron, Jubu, uh, Carl Wheeler, y'all are the business still today. My, and that's why I want to get to this point. Uh, there's a concert October 12th at the Oracle Arena mm -hmm. in Oakland, California. All of y'all from Oakland, you all have fans. This is where y'all started in Oakland, all six of y'all, including everybody else. And you and Raphael is not speaking. He's going to come here with Dwayne and Tim Riley, uh -huh. Dwayne Wiggins and Tim, Tim Riley. They're going to put on a concert without uh, the band. Correct. That's going to hurt my feelings because it doesn't make any sense. You all are here. Have y'all ever heard of the group uh, Fleetwood Mac? Yes. They had a group. Everybody in that group was funkin'. And they were having affairs with each other. It was so many secrets. And they would get on stage and kill it. Like, if you go, I, I recently went on one of their songs. Um, now I can't even think of the song. But they had 108 million views on one of those songs okay. on the Rumor album. And they did not get along. But when it came down to business, they would get on that stage and give the people what they wanted. Well, and when they would get off stage, they wasn't speaking no more. Now, I feel like y'all owe your fans, you owe Oakland. It's so many family members that's probably biased or don't want to come. I mean, maybe they, they want to come, come, but they don't can't. Come. Exactly, yeah, it's, it's, because it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not right. No, it's not right. And that that's like we all have to suffer because of that. I'm sure they're going to have an outstanding uh, performance October 12th but it's still gonna just have this eerie feeling because they Raphael ain't gonna ain't, ain't, he's not gonna like that I could look at him and tell I feel his energy and this is when I I listen to 
and I'm talking to you now, Raphael, in your face. This is when I look at listen to that song, This World is Drunk, and the people are mad. That's what y'all, that's y'all. I think that the song should have been dedicated to all six of y'all because y'all drunk and y'all mad and y'all well, need to I'm, sober I'm, I'm, up. I'm sober and I'm mad. <laughs> <laughs> ain't drunk. Hey, 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 about hey, me. And you not no pushover, man. I'm looking at all this. I'm looking at credits. You did stuff. Two short, Soul Seekers, The Coop, The Dog Pound, Raphael Sadiq, Alicia Keys, Dwayne Wiggins. The list go on and on, man. Yeah, you, man. I ain't, I ain't been twiddling you, my thumbs, man. Like, everybody got accolades, man. It's, it's I don't that. think that's you our point. We no, know no, that. No, I'm saying what he said, like, oh, yeah. if, 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 if we sit here crying for or whatever term, if we sit here complaining about something for 30, 30 years. 30 years ago. Y'all should be. He made a point like, like as if we ain't doing nothing outside nah, of that. Nah, you doing something? Yeah, man. Yeah, because he also mentioned that your friends was bombs. On the well, if my friend bombs, his friends bombs. We got the same friends. <laughs> <laughs> <Shit. laughs> Tell him yourself, right? Shit. As he said, his friends are bombs. What? What? what, what listen, do you have no, no, hold on, hold on. Let me say this real quick. If you do got what he meant by that, me and like I said, we had candid conversations before. So he know that I'm. I take care of a lot of people. And he know I get used. And I know I get used. I ain't doing that shit no more. But that's me. I I look out, and nobody look back out. So he fighting for me on that. He not he not being malicious right there. He just tell it, please. He just pretty much saying, "Hey, man, let's hear it." Fuck with a lot of phony niggas. Due to copyright laws, content from This World Is Drunk by Raphael Sadiq will not be displayed in this episode. However, this title is available for purchase and or viewing on popular sites such as YouTube. That man sung that song. I know he felt that because he did that. Well, you know, what's ironic about that song, that was one of my other cousin's songs. It's a gospel quartet group called uh, Gospel Songwriters out of Monroe. They either Monroe or somewhere close by there. Anyway, they wrote that song when we was kids, and uh, Rafi always loved that song. And oh, they wrote the hook. Yeah, they wrote the hook. This okay. world is drunk and people is mad, and uh, he always said he's gonna do something. I just didn't know I was gonna be a part of it, but uh, Cause baby, <laughs> you are definitely. Well, you know, listen, 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 listen. I own up to you know I committed a crime. I did fraud. You know, that's, what I'm saying? that's how they you knew for sure they was talking about you. Yes, in the four years, four that's years. exactly what I did. Federal that time. Was that your first time? Fun. Was that your first time going to jail? Yes, at forty years old. What? But listen to me though. Cause you went when? Hey, never mind. See, one well, thing. I started see, at sixteen. I, I'm, I'm explaining <laughs> to you what I did. Like, I did it, and I never felt good about doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was always convicted, but I just it was it was providing, right? And it was also helping, but I was always had a conviction doing it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, so I had a black market travel agency i just fly everybody mm. on a hookup right you know what i'm saying so even his nephews stuck at school can't get back i got you <laughs> his uncle got money they but shit he called me so when you're gonna tell that story <laughs> tell the whole story he know this right you know what i'm saying and also i did that but I shouldn't even have to be in the position to have hustle as an option when I put my hard work into this group and was a signed member. And if I'd have got, if we would have got our just doing money, we'd still be together. It wouldn't right. be no complaining. Wouldn't be no tension. I wouldn't have to hustle as an option. Commit fraud. Do you do you think the four years affected you um, creatively? Oh, profoundly. But it helped. Was me it for good or bad? Oh, it was for the great. You wrote like, Park Avenue and. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote my whole solo record, in, um, and I did one previously, but I wrote a great that I felt great about in there and um, came out, executed. Raphael wrote on a couple songs with me in there, um, touched my stick, and he played guitar on Ride. And um, so we did that, man, and uh, I just, it gave me some time to think, and I wouldn't change it. I don't huh. care. I wouldn't rewrite that to not go again, like, Right, that, right. that experience was very necessary. Well, at that time. I, I, I would imagine it was a hell of an experience because you got to think about it. Most people, I wouldn't say most people like that, but you know, at 40 years old, touching prison, a federal prison, at the age that you are, see, most people, they, they do some 20s. graduating. Yeah. Like, you know, I did juvenile hall, right. I did camp, and then I did reading. I right. said, I don't want to graduate no more. <laughs> right. You feel <laughs> exactly. me? Exactly. But you, didn't, you didn't skipped all I that. Skipped I'm in the feds. So listen, bro, it was like, it was like, <laughs> like damn. It was okay. like, I don't know what. 
it's about to happen. Right. But I'm gonna deal with it. Okay. So in there is just like the streets, just like you know. The jailhouse is just like the streets. You know who to deal with, who don't to deal with, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you just vibe on who vibe with you. But I, I didn't have no issues in there. It was it was it was a cool experience. I knew if that person didn't match my energy, I just wasn't around them. Right. And creatively, like what were was it was it more of a instrumental going through your mind and things well, like I, that? Well, I, I, I had guitars in there. That's when I what? learned how to play the guitar fluently. I, cause I'm, I'm a bass player, so I always know how to pick on the guitar a little bit, knew a few chords, but I learned theory. I knew how to play everything once I I can listen to something now and pick it up on the guitar before I can do that. And you got that from being in the feds? Yeah, four years, boy. I just, you I, played I put, your little stuff. I put, <laughs> yeah, I put that thing to work, <laughs> boy. Death. That was a, such a, a relief. I, I performed in there, too. What? Yeah, I had concerts in there. I taught <laughs> other, oh other inmates how to play better, and we did concerts. Oh, I, wow. I performed some of the Park Avenue songs in there. Pretty. And I said, if them niggas like me, <laughs> <laughs> they going to love me when I get I'd home, been there. I'd have been there. Avenue. I'm going home on the morning train. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and nobody Big Springs, knows my and, worry. In Big Springs, you know, I went from I went from a prison camp so to a um, uh, thousand. They uh, prison, prison camp only held about a hundred people, mm -hmm. but the uh, low held about a thousand plus. And I went in Texas, away from all my people. But oh, in right. the federal system, you always gonna know somebody because they move you around like FedEx packages. Right, right. So when I went there, it was some people I was being with from Atwater, and people from Atwater had somebody they knew, and they sent kites, let them know I was coming. Right, so, right. So. When you're in the feds, it That's don't matter. a movie. Yeah. yeah. Anybody anybody from the group reach out while you was in there? Raphael is the only one. Oh. Yeah. See, see, I, I feel like I feel like you know how a match I mean a, a fire about to go out. I feel like it's still sizzling. I think I think a relationship could be mended, but at the end of the day, somebody's gonna have to answer for what you're talking about too. But you know what I'm saying? It, uh, to be honest, I know for a fact, once me and Raphael see eye to eye contact, it's, maybe it's big brother bullying them. It's just it, shut up, nigga. That's my money. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> Ray, 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 can't, Ray can't be bully, but <laughs> he can. Up, he he can he be passive at times when it comes to Wayne, but he mm. can't be bullied. But he's a Taurus, and he's stubborn, yeah, he's stubborn. That's that's, that's we both are. So that's yes. that's our class. Yeah, but uh, the big brother syndrome, no, blood. He been beating him up since he was little, blood. Yeah. You don't forget that, Jesus. Nah, shut up. he has. Don't over, give Elijah he, shit. He has over the years. <laughs> No, like even 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 right now, that's what's going on. Cause he said it, you know, the way he can say fuck y'all the way. If he ain't do it, I ain't doing it. But he ain't right. gonna do that, and I don't want him to do that. Right, so, right, right. like I said, it ain't just me. You got everybody got to come to, for it to even be an option. And then all of us have to talk and heal. Cause I don't wanna, I'm, I've been on stage with them mad before. I don't want to get on stage with nobody mad. Them. I'm too old to be mad playing. Man, with fuck him. that. Call him on the phone right now. Put him on speaker. Let's he ain't gonna ask about call right now. Text him. Hey, nigga, we want to holler. No, I ain't calling. Dial the number. No, let's try. No. Nope. Man, it's going to be exclusive, man. Go ahead. Call him. And have a look. <laughs> like, listen, I, listen, nah. listen, I promise y'all, when me and him cross path, we're going to have that conversation. We're going to be emotional. We're going to be yelling. And somebody might even cry. But it will happen. And then that's when it's going to be mended. Because all I'm saying is, when Ray, you talk about facts, just get the contracts. And you understand our frustrations. And we didn't know this 30 years ago. We found out 30 years later. So that's why we're talking about it. Now, if we'd have known this the whole time, it would have been dealt with in 1990. Let me ask you something you, did, you, you might not have ever well, thought 91. about. Well, 91. Go ahead. Let me ask you something you might not have ever thought about. What if tomorrow y'all all get together? Y'all go over paperwork, y'all making it all happen, seeing what's up, putting everything on the board, and you getting down to the nitty gritty, and it turns out you were wrong. I would admit it and apologize. That's all I'm asking them to do. Is to do what I just said. Let's break it all the way down. Yeah, let's meet together, put the paperwork out. Whoever wrong, admit it and apologize and compensate. Then we can talk about a future, a potential future. But I will admit that I'm wrong. And that's hard for me to do, but I will do that. You will do that if, but, it, if it came out that you were wrong. Yeah, but I'm not wrong. Okay. And you know you're not wrong because of the paperwork you just showed If you go us. in this court of law, they're going to ask you to pull out that paperwork. They don't care about no, you say facts or, you know, he don't know what he talk about. A, okay, what the contract says. I really believe if if that contract was not legit, they would have been, Dwayne and Raphael both would have said, we have paperwork proving that the paperwork he has is obsolete. Since you know everybody, and, and if y'all come across them, just ask them, 
Take They Avenue, which is the same avenue, Universal Music Group, because Dwayne said that in the Sound Exchange um, email he sent me. If you want our paperwork, they got all our binding contracts. Universal Musical Group, Music Group. That's where I went and got this contract with all six signatures. So the benefit of doubt you said, they might not know. They might just thought with the with the Tony Tony Inc. I'm sure all they six know by now. Yeah, probably by now. But I'm saying, while the action shows different, they they walking boldly and proudly like. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right, right. And I do know what the fuck I'm talking about. Right. So I'm I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt that they just might learn this shit 30 years later just like me. Right. So if y'all listen to that, just the go case. find out, right? <laughs> Hopefully that's just the go case. find out, please. please. Do. And, yeah. and and think about your fans, think about your friends, think about your family here in the Bay Area. Y'all gonna all be in the same city, October twelfth. And are you going to the concert? To I, I live in Texas, so, you know, okay. I come back and forth. But You're in Oakland right now. Yeah, but I guarantee I'll be in Oakland on October 12th. In 99 and a half to 100%, I will be here if I had a part of it. Well, one more city. <laughs> Unless I'm working. Before we let you go, one more city. Now, if they do take a look at all that and it turns out the money and everything, you, you deserve some and you get a couple of million dollars. Could me and Shay get five hundred five hundred thousand? <laughs> no, nah, you get five hundred dollars. You do that since we help us. You get five hundred dollars because that's all the work you put in. You can't go to thirty uh, thirty years to thirty minutes to get. I get five hundred. I'll be knowing I'm fair. Over I'm years. fair. <laughs> and got, I've bro. always been a fan. Even when y'all had y'all gospel group over thirty years ago. Oh, well, now that wasn't thirty years ago. After the Tonys. When yeah, y'all had the way. gospel group. His way. Yeah. With, with that, Derek out of Sacramento, Ray. Yeah. Me, Jubu, Pick Funk, Carl It was Wheeler. amazing. And before we do go, I want to mention Jubu and Amar because I felt bad for those guys. I did. But there's two sides to every story. Raphael Sadiq mentioned that Jubu claims he wrote a song, Anniversary. Is it Anniversary. It's our anniversary. Yes. Da, 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 da. Yes. He wrote the music to the song. Yes. And Ray claims he wrote the song. Well, let me explain I that. I think they both maybe wrote the song and they need to just both. Let me explain that. Okay. To the best of my ability. Okay. When you in the studio, us, us three in the studio, right? And we creating. Now, you may come with the bass line. You may come with the drums. And... I may I may tell you here go the tempo boom boom then you can come with the bass line and then I I play the guitar on top of that but you didn't tell me what to pay play so that means I created that guitar line you created that drum beat you created that bass line so collectively we wrote that song together together okay so I believe that um I think that's what happened matter of fact I wasn't there but I know that Ray couldn't possibly tell Jubu to play the chords he played because at that time he was he's he's a he's a, a much better guitar player than Raphael is, but he he's not no Jubu good like far as theory wise and voicings. But he's a good guitar player right now. But he Amazing. wasn't he wasn't Raphael was not a good guitar player in the nineties. Raphael started getting more fluent with the guitar when he started going solo and doing Lucy Pearl days. That's when he started getting more kind of around. And then after I me, I love me some Lucy. Pearl. And after that, then that's when I went away. That's when I got fluent with it. But that's around the time Raphael got real fluent with it. He always knew how to play guitar. He played. He played the guitar line on "Let's Get Down" with DJ Quick. That's him playing guitar. So he knew how to play the guitar. But yes, he does. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't. I can guarantee you. He didn't can tell, we call Jubu? He didn't tell Jubu what to play. Put a call in on Jubu. He didn't get Jubu them chords. Now maybe Jubu followed the bass line. So I wasn't there, but he didn't tell Jubu how to play them chords. Nobody could tell Jubu how to play no damn chords. Colin Jubu. Hello? Hey, Jubu. It's your girl, Shay Sugar, here at the podcast. I'm here with Mr. Elijah Baker and comedian Jay Rich. How are you doing today, honey? What's up, bro? I'm doing wonderful. How y'all doing? Good. You sound wonderful. We were here sitting, uh, having a conversation about, and you came up uh, when we mentioned the song Anniversary. I heard a interview with Raphael Sadiq. Uh, the other day in Sway, and then I kind of heard you mention it on what is that noise? A Jubu car. Oh. 
Kind of dry. He's driving. Is that is that better? Is that back? Perfect. So I also okay. heard a li- you talking a little bit yesterday on uh, Elijah's uh, Facebook Live, and uh, mm-hmm. the way you talk, you wrote the song at the you wrote the music to at the song anniversary, and then when I hear. Raphael Sadiq speak about it. He's saying you did not have anything to do with it. And I, I really believe that Raphael is fibbing because you have so much passion and it just hurts me because I don't know what's going on. So I am a fan of all of you. Let's let's get that straight. You, Raphael, Jubu. Okay. So we want, I just want clarity and I would love for y'all to have a conversation together. How do you feel about this situation? And do you feel like y'all can all get together and resolve this? Because I know that you guys love each other and this is just hurting the world. It's pitiful. Well, let me just, let me say this. You never say never, but I personally don't have no interest in it because like, honestly, like anybody in this industry, that knows what, you know, what I've spent 30 years creating for a career and, and a legacy. And, you know, and I give all credit to Raphael for him helping me, you know, the part that he's done in my career, you know, introducing me to the studio, introducing me to Tony, Tony, Tony. He did that. He, he's the thing of the way to get me in that, you know, a part of that situation. And I'm forever, I'm forever grateful for that. So I just don't understand why we have to, um, you know, lessen what people's, uh, you know, contributions to the to the music was. You know, I don't have to belittle you to make myself look great. But what I can tell you is, is that um, I I was telling Elijah that I don't remember any particular way we would all be in the room together. But I remember what anniversary. What I remember first hearing was. The drum machine. Okay? It was mm-hmm. an old drum machine that Dwayne had programmed this, um, this, you know, beat. He programmed the beat. And we were all sitting there, me, Carl, and Ray, and Dwayne, and Tim, we were all in there. And let's say, let's even say Ray did the bass line. Because I've thought of this over and over because I'm like, how do you really just go and tell Slade I didn't, I didn't help write the song, even if I didn't get credit for it, you know? Mm-hmm. But let's say he's playing the bass line. Right? Mm-hmm. Okay? Now, I know for a fact I played those chords around that bass line. Nobody told me to play those chords. Those chords, what I'm playing, is a, they're a minor. Okay? Now, had I played a major, it would be a whole different song. It would be a whole different melody that he would have to wrap around that chord progression. But he chose... That what I did, and there were no lyrics before we came up with those four progressions. So, you know, you can say I, I didn't, I didn't do this or I didn't do that, and I'm okay with it because I'm still writing songs. And 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 you know, I feel like this: if you need that credit that bad, you need to stand up by yourself for that that bad. Then then go ahead. I don't want to be in the way of that. And maybe after he hear this, maybe he will remember. Because I don't really want to call Raphael a fib. So maybe he forgot. It's 30 years ago. And maybe after he hear what you just said, he'll come back and fix it. That's what I'm praying. I mean, what is there to really fix? If you were to get the credit, will more money come your way? I ain't hung up. I ain't hung up. He's driving. Um, if, if they rectify it, he will get some money because he gets uh, publishing credit and they got to change the percentages of the royalties. Okay. So now, I, don't know, I, don't he, I don't know if he get back pay, but he'll start getting checks. Now, how does it, how does that work if he did the bass line or the guitar or something? If three did, of us in the room, let me make a, uh, I'll give you a synopsis. If three of us in the room and we work on one song, okay. out of 100%, 33. Okay, 33, 33. Jubu, sounds like there's a bad reception. Hold on, Elijah. Sound like there's a bad reception, sweetheart, because I know you're driving. But we just want to get that point out and basically uh, Elijah answered and let me, Jay and let me also say this. Okay. My songwriting situation with Tony, Tony, Tony is unique because you take Lehman, for instance. I help write lyrics. I help write the music. Yet I only receive 5% of that song, and Raphael received 
Rafael. How many people was so, in the room with y'all when y'all did that when y'all did that song? Me and Raphael. So that's what's been fifty fifty legally. Me and me and Raphael. And and so whether it's legally or not, I can say this about that process with Tony, Tony, Tony and Raphael. It was never cut and dry. Any other situation that I've been a part of, and I have over 100 songs played, okay? I have over 100 songs that are placed and published, including some that you guys know. And in every single situation, it was never wondering who got this, who got that. Okay, man, if you wrote the lyrics, the song is 50% lyrics, 50% melody, okay, with your chord progressions and chord body. Every situation outside of Tony, 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 it has never been an issue. Except for a ball and MJG that me and Elijah had to enlighten, you know, those people on that side about. But I'm, I'm, I'm saying as far as people in the room writing together, creating together, it's all, it's never been an issue. The, the Tony situation for me was unique in that sense. I'll just say it that way. And I'm not saying that Raphael is wrong and I'm right or any of that. But according to what I was told, I wrote everything that wasn't written down for me and everything that wasn't wasn't told for me to play. That's okay. my creation. So during, the, so, my creation. so during the 2020 recording, you was never told what to play? Never, ever, ever. Okay. On my children. Well, honey, you, we, we Wait, love But, but you how, did, how did you get to the point where you didn't get, a, get credit for it or compensate it? During the time when the during the time when you when you when you laid down the music to it being recorded never, to being sold, why you wasn't compensated right then and there? I wasn't even informed about publishing. Let me tell you, how I was even told about publishing. They didn't. They never told me about publishing. I would have known about it to this day had not we went and played. It was the first song we were doing off the um, Sons and So album. The first show we were doing was our studio hall. And there's a white man sitting in the audience while we were doing rehearsal. And after that rehearsal, he came up to me and he said, hey, man, I'm a huge Tony, Tony, Tony fan. And I see the, the growth from a guitar standpoint from the last, the first two albums to this album. And he said, now I finally, I'm finally hearing it. I'm, I'm hearing it and seeing it with my own eyes. He's like, wow, man, you're amazing. I'm, thank you so much. And he's like, so what's the name of your publishing company? I may want to do some work with you. And I was like, what's that? And he gave me the saddest look on, on the, you know, on his face. And he's like, you don't, you don't know about publishing? No, I don't. And the album was out. Mm. Or the record was generated, the single was out. First single was out. We were, we were promoting that, you know, the album hadn't come out yet. So, so the, the first, what I remember the dude asked me, he's like, so you don't have, a DBA or LLC or, you know, anything for, for you know, to, to cover your music. You're writing, you're writing these songs with these people. Mm. No, he's like, so how, how does the process go? I said, man, we'll go in there and, and it'll be like a drum beat or, or we'll start, you know, we'll, we'll mount the tempo and we'll just start doing different chord progressions, whether it's me or whether it's Carl, whether it's Tim, you know, well, Ray may have a bass line, and then we'll color around that bass line. But what I was told was that, okay, a bass line, is, there's no, there's no harmony. Once you start adding harmonies, that's the difference between a major and a minor chord or a dominant chord. That changes the melody. That affects the record. And once again, I never had to have, have, have these issues outside of 2020. Yeah, understandable. Now, we hear that there's a new band titled 3TOB. Mm -hmm. And you are part of this band, am I correct? I named that band. Yes, you did. Now, uh, Elijah said he named the band. <laughs> You know Elijah. Elijah was a goddamn lie. <laughs> you know Elijah. He said that boy. <laughs> yes, you did. And he, and he needs ten percent of everything no. y'all make for the rest it's of this it's year. Jubal's old field, baby. So <laughs> we see who's lying. Why you? Why you? Know, you I, I, I'm a fact checker. We, it's, it's old field. I did not say I. Now we're gonna that. do some cross referencing <laughs> then yeah. and make sure. But listen, Jubal. <laughs> Thank you so much because we want to play the song uh, for the audience. Three T O B. Congratulations to thank everything you. and thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Support all of us. 
all of us. You know, it don't matter if, if y'all think we got beef tank, but this is all of us. If you think it's good, support it. Don't hate on it because we, we might think we're against each other. If, if the music is good, support it. Okay, that's all I want to say. I love y'all and have a good one. You too, brother. We safe. love you too. Take it and easy. we'll see you soon here at the Gab Show. All right. Thank you. Drake, can we play that really fast? This is one of the songs. Shout out to Amar Khalil one more time. They, uh, I watched an uh, interview on another show with Raphael Sadiq, and they asked him about Amar, and Amar mentioned, um, Raphael Sadiq mentioned that Amar was a nobody. <laughs> and that really hurt Amar. Amar got on Facebook and said, wow. We were friends. My grandmother made us peanut butter and jelly sandwiches back in the day. We shared clothes back in the day years ago. And for him to just tell him, he say that he was a nobody, he was really hurt behind that. My heart went out to Amar because Amar is definitely a somebody. And a lot of people think Amar is Raphael Sadiq when he's playing or singing. Who is Amar Khalil, Shay? Amar Khalil is the... Well, he used to be. Ask me that question. Oh, uh, Elijah, who's Amar Khalil? <laughs> Amar Khalil is the ex lead singer of Tony Tony who filled in after Raphael for 20 years consecutively. Right. That's who Amar Khalil is. And I apologize. I thought everybody would know that. Cause, but I'm saying he was so good. A lot of people think Amar Khalil is Raphael Sadiq. Yes, for the few years when I came back and um, he was singing every night. You can see it in a crowd I, every night. That's Raphael. No, it ain't. That's Raphael. No, it ain't. Yeah. Every night they got the same swag. They got the same, same swag. They, they could. They could pass for brothers. For they real. could. They sounded like when they talked. Yeah. So you know, um, you just, could tell they were best friends back in the day. Swag. And, I, and I, I think, I don't think I know for a fact that slipped. He he he. he Raphael immediately he, regretted it. 
after he said it. And so I, that was from him being upset. Yes, and uh, from the documentary. Because last night when he when well, the other night when Sway asked him, uh, had he seen the documentary, and he sat back and said, "Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I said that sounds just like Amar. Like if my eyes was closed, I wouldn't know which who was who." Yeah, but they them two them two had a talk, so I don't know exactly how it went. Okay. Well, Good. I know for a that's fact. That's what it's about. Raphael that's, did call that's Amar. That's what everybody should do. They did talk. Thank you, Raphael. Raphael I don't know need why. to call you, fam. Yeah, Raphael, Raphael called Raphael talked to Jubal. <laughs> Raphael, he flew. He, he had a show in New Orleans, but he found Carl and Jubal. He called Amar. But he ain't called me. Well, you know, you got a little bit bigger since you got out the fed. I did. You know, I'm so you, some pipe thumbs, <laughs> so boy. You might not Raphael is me. big too. Y'all, he ain't as big as me. Raphael about one sixty. I'm two thirteen. It's a big difference. <laughs> well, whatever. Y'all ain't Man, about, he to about be five sub. I'm six one. Y'all too old to be breaking bones. <laughs> we ain't gonna bones. fight. We ain't never fought. Thank you. <laughs> we argue, but we we would never ever ever fight. Well, I don't understand why he hasn't called you. Raphael he called is else. like that, man. Raphael, and, and, why haven't you called your cousin? Listen, listen. And why haven't you called Raphael? Because we both are stubborn and we both think we're right. But he called everybody right. else. But you're the ring leader. Of I it. am. I'm, I'm the culprit. So you're the ring leader. I'm the culprit. So you're the ring leader. So he won't I call. am. Okay. But this whole thing ain't in a Raphael and Elijah issue. This is. Uh, it, I'm just a saying group. because he's called everybody else. Why haven't y'all? St- talk to each other this is crazy. i can't i can't answer for him but I, I know i know i'm not gonna call him because i feel like y'all did something wrong to me so i'm not gonna call you and ask you why you did something wrong to me you know you made an error or a mistake i'm gonna do it as delicate as possible mm-hmm. you made some type of mistake or we have some type of misunderstanding that you was in control of so you have that Responsibility. Come man, give it to him straight, me. man. Either you stole from me or you didn't know. Which one is? It's one of the two. See, I got it out there for yeah. you. Yeah. Really well, like I said, <laughs> but like I said, I can't pin I on him because I could be sitting listen, next to Raphael I, right listen, now. I can't, oh I, I can't pin it on him because he got stolen from also. Right. That's why I said. So it could be flip. them stealing from me, and he Dwayne, didn't. Yeah, but I don't. Dwayne. I don't know. I don't know. I, but when we pull that paperwork, I'm gonna find out. Nah, and then, I don't know. When Dwayne I pull always that, been good listen, to me. Shay and, and Jay Rich, when I pull that paperwork and I see where that money's allocated to, I will call whoever touched that money. Period. Point blank. And we over here with our last 30 seconds. This right, right now is, is an allegation. the Gab Show, good people. It's me, Shea Sugar. Shout and out we to our know super what, producer. We want to know what the audience think. Could y'all please go online, email us, thegabshow at gmail.com. And we will also uh, have, I don't know if, for a fact, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't even say <laughs> yeah, well, what, <laughs> Like I said, from hearsay, Gab words. Show. We want to hear what y'all got to say and what y'all want. All we telling y'all is we don't talk facts. We have paperwork, so have Ray, Tim, and Dwayne produce their paperwork, and we can start there. And let's make peace. Let's make peace and get together.